Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kuali Beach. Uh, last week, Mike had to take it over <laughs> from me because I... Kuali Beach? Kuali <laughs> Beach? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. And welcome to Kuali Beach <laughs> Zoo thing. Oh. Um, well, you know, we are, we are managing this, this, this big corporation with different parks across the world. Sometimes you mess up one name with the other <laughs> one, you know, it happens. We have different resorts all across the world. That's just... Yeah, Sylph has the technical resort definitely for him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, God. So anyway, welcome, <laughs> welcome back to Kuali Zoo. Uh, last week, Mike had to take it over from me because I had a bunch of school responsibilities that I had to take care of. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, Mike. Oh, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it was really great. Actually, I highly recommend everyone, everybody to check it out if you haven't yet, because <laughs> it was a really cool episode where he created the uh, flamingo habitat right in front of the building that I'm working on right now. So mm -hmm. it gives a pretty good context um, as to what that is like. And if you've already seen it, go watch it back before this video to refresh your mind or something and give Mike <laughs> another view. <laughs> I don't know, you don't have to do that, <laughs> but it could be useful, you never know. And as always, we have Rudy here as well, of course. Yes. Hello. <laughs> um, Rudy as well. <laughs> but it's... it's <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Um, it's, it's a bit strange to, like, introduce you guys after you've already introduced yourself. Anyway, um, in this episode, I'll be trying to work on this building here, which finishes the flamingo habitat that Mike worked on in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And I'll also be doing some stuff alongside the main boulevard going through the ah. zoo. Uh, nice. Which originally I didn't really dare to tackle, but I'll be making one little scene there, but that's something we'll get to later on. I mean, the boulevard has been your project. It's, if anybody's going to tackle it, it's going to be you. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't want... Nobody wants to tackle it. Oh, well, you you want to tackle that, Mike, but just when Silva's finished. <laughs> just, the, just the gardening part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I know your parasitic ways. I'll, I'll try to, like, build a bunch of stuff and you can swoop oh, in God. with some gardening and uh. that'll actually be fantastic. Uh, we did yeah, I do have I mean, that <laughs> unforgivable eye for ugly, so... <laughs> I'm still dying over the text on, on, on that video. <laughs> you have the most amazing quotes, Rudy. You just do. Thank you, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's like a blender of English, and it's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> blender of English. Yeah, it's, it's a blender of English, not another language. I mean, at least an alien <laughs> language. <laughs> this is really cool, though. When I first saw this, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's that's amazing. That totally fits. Oh, yeah, it does. Uh, we're not oh, talking yeah. about the quotes anymore, right? Okay, I'm, never mind. <laughs> 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 no, I guess not. Um, if I can give a bit of backstory about this building. Um, mm -hmm. As always, I, I, I have to do my bit of architectural exploration before I build. I just love to procrastinate on Wikipedia and Google Images <laughs> until the end of time and just kind of have to force myself to start building at some point too. Um, but what I try to do is there's this really beautiful sort of modern aesthetic to this whole area. Um, and I wanted to keep that, but at the same time, I wanted to incorporate some uh, very uh, local touches as well. So this building mm -hmm. is inspired by, um, well, Indonesian temples. And I'm going to have to look up in the background which ones exactly, because I actually didn't save any of the exact inspirations. <laughs> but there are these temples um, <laughs> with a really difficult name that I don't know by heart. Uh, which have very uh, pointy, curvy spires on the sides of their roofs. Mm -hmm. And that's the general shape that this building was inspired by, as well as a modern mosque somewhere in Indonesia, which uh, also takes some inspirations from these roof shapes. So it's very much uh, using traditional shapes, but putting them in a different context and mm -hmm. also using different materials, because obviously uh, the material use here is quite contemporary. So... It's really actually quite a basic shape, but then uh, there's the sort of decorative big spire in front, which doesn't really serve any architectural purpose, but is really just there uh, to make the building a bit more interesting and yeah, make it fit into the into the scene of the flamingo habitat in front of it a bit more. Yeah, bravo. It's really, really dynamic and really cool. And it's, it's that um, 
mixture of styles that because I was I was way okay with just having that kind of typical Polynesian look and then you're like nah we're not doing that <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, for, forgive my my messing up the intro but at the end of the day I think um, one of one of our first sort of goals here is to not make it look like another Kuali beach and really go into a different direction uh, mm -hmm. while retaining the, the sort of same biome yeah true. so I, I think yeah sorry you know I, no. I think we can sort of keep doing that here I, I totally nice. love it. I love it. I remember when we first brainstormed about the, the different architectural styles we wanted to go for and we were throwing in like, you know, images and stuff and over the past couple of episodes we, we started to establish um, this more and more. But I love this touch of, of you bringing back now the bit more traditional Polynesian um, styles, especially with the roofs and stuff, which I think blends in a lot more with the entrance now, but also it kind of moves toward what Mike did and also I tried to mm -hmm. do a bit more with the um, education center and, you know, these kind of things. I, I love how this um, is an, a really living thing, you know, that you can really tell that there were different time frames when the buildings were made and they took mm -hmm. inspiration from the different things. And I really love how this comes out now. And I think now we are at this point where we talked about early on in the last episode that how our building styles are differing so much from each other. But now this is really what Sylph can can bring up again, this, this wonderful mm -hmm. architectural blend of styles and still make it look really cool as if it really was meant to be that way and yeah. I really think that was needed again and I I just love it I can already tell that I'm really happy about this building uh, sitting exactly where it sits it's really a little next eye catcher I guess mm -hmm. you know just avoided another mm -hmm. word here yeah thanks and I think it also makes sense in the sort of layout of a zoo uh, of course it's really different from Kuali Beach in a sense that everything will be made over different periods and very much organically mm -hmm. and also very much depending on uh, whichever habitat it's related to. So uh, I think going for a large variety of different architectural styles which just fit the nature of a zoo much more as well. Yeah, I, I mean this building looks like it is in one of those architecture textbooks of like, oh this is a perfect example of blank design or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's just so... Um, it almost it, it feels a little I, I i keep coming back to about 70s for this kind of the style mm -hmm. where they took traditional mm -hmm. uh religious kind of shapes and stuff like that and they put them in modern materials which allowed them to do really cool like stretched out big plaster things and that's kind of what it feels like to me i don't know if that was your inspiration or era yeah i actually um for me it's been tough i actually wouldn't know exactly what kind of era or style to put this building in exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, it's definitely regionalism, you know, this this general philosophy of taking modern technology and, and, and modern contemporary building styles, I should say uh, contemporary in the context of architecture, uh, and uh, taking local influences and embedding that in that. Nice. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly what kind of, of style it would be. I, I think personally, I'm feeling something 90s, maybe okay. early zeros and something like that but cool. um it could definitely be from the the 70s a bit as well it feels like churches of of that era um with the big white spire and stuff like that in the in the very oh yeah right mm -hmm. I, I think that's uh you mean like those those suburban churches that mm -hmm. you find mm -hmm. in a lot of the u.s a little bit yeah <laughs> that's such a like an interesting style of architecture i've always found because <laughs> it's they're they're always very modern churches obviously these suburbs are all from the 50s 60s 70s 80s mm -hmm. and the u.s suburb churches have such a typical style to them i i can definitely see the resemblance i, th I think it, it really fits to this this comparison but i'm, I'm a little bit like uh, also split on that it could be like really back to the 70s but i'm also with yourself because i remember that at the moment at least i see even today um, buildings changed back a little bit into this style. It almost feels like very modern to me um, mm -hmm. because they try to re-embrace this bit more classical into the very modern buildings. I mean, surely it would then use a bit more, even more modern materials like, I don't know, aluminum or I don't know, even metal. It surely mm -hmm. is not. It's surely plaster. So I don't know. But I, I really love this unique style and I love how this 
really catches the attention in that area in particular, but not too much, you know. It, it's not stealing too much attention from the habitat or the or the, um, the, the exhibition hall you did, uh, Mike. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really quite mm -hmm. impressed by how it fits in. I really, I, it just feels right. I think it's not even too important which which time it is, but it feels right. It feels fitting. I think it's really cool. Well, and that's going to be the challenge that a lot of people have kind of brought up. Like, okay, so you've got Rudy's area, you've got Mike's area, you've got Delady's area, you've got Sylv's entrance. How do you bring that together? Well, that's what a collaboration is. And that's what we're, we're aiming yep. to figure out. When we start filling in the gaps, you're going to start seeing these styles kind of homogenize a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, and I definitely felt that with this as well, because... For, for how I feel personally, I would never be able to do the flamingo habitat itself nearly as well. The foliage and rock work and that <laughs> is just next level. But then I feel like for me, it's, it's, it's better to like swoop in and fill in that empty spot uh, while mm -hmm. Mike goes on and does his gardening somewhere else. It's, it's really these sort of things where you can complement each other. Yeah. And I must say it's more, it's, it's like really... It's really also embracing the way how an actual zoo is planned as well. You don't have that one architect planning out a zoo, or actually mm -hmm. very seldom, you know. Um, might be that there are some examples where you have a fully planned out zoo, but even then, like, this would only be correct for the beginning, but later on, it definitely would be someone else taking over, changing bits and pieces, and you know. So, at the end of the day, it's how a real zoo would work as well. You have, like, a different area, mm -hmm. and then you have an architect planning out that area, and then another one has to work off of what the other one started, you know? Yeah, the, That's way, how that it is. Is, yep. the way that this is coming together is almost like there was a zoo here before, or there there was at least a somewhat of a zoo, like around the Temple Ruins or something like that. And then they decided, oh, we can turn this into a resort. So now it's a zoo hybrid kind of resort um, with different modern architectural styles and a little bit more of a uh, push for resort amenities and stuff like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is the way that I'm seeing how this is evolving. Yeah, I can definitely see that. This is so cool. Mm. <laughs> I love this I'm just fascinated by the traditional Jakarta Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was also about to say even one person can have totally different styles. Like here, I'm completely shifting from the last building into something which also tries to blend uh, the traditional styles with uh, something that is from the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, this was mainly inspired by the old town of Jakarta. Mm -hmm. And that's generally... Well, I've been sending so many pictures of the old town of Jakarta <laughs> into our own little Discord group. Um, so th they have an old town which is like really the old colonial area of the city built by the Dutch. And it features a lot of Dutch colonial architecture uh, with a canal in the middle of it. And even a Dutch bridge as well. And mm -hmm. I thought this was something really interesting and just generally a lot of architecture that I was really inspired by and wanted to try out. Um, also because for some reason I have never really done much Dutch architecture and this is, uh, this is really close to that. Uh, this is really fun to try out. I really love also how much this is working as a, as a main street ish, you know, you say you mm -hmm. work on the basic main street area, but I love how this, I don't know why it really reminds me so much of a main street, but I think these Dutch buildings have the big advantage of having the, the wonderful big facade that mm -hmm. really blend, mm -hmm. blends away the background a lot, which is the style. You know, if I remember, for example, Amsterdam and the canals and stuff, you always have this, this like huge facades blocking off what's behind. So you really get that immersed feeling of being in the center of that like little town area, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think this is exactly how a main street also works. You have this this one facade with a lot of detail and with a lot of styles. And then that what's, what's in the back is not as important, you know. And that's yeah. why I'm really thinking that would work perfectly fine for the main street. I like the idea of almost Las Vegas in this and thinking if this was actually, if this was an addition to when they put the, the hotel and the resort in, this is like the shopping promenade. And so you have yeah. this sort of traditional architecture, but it's done, it's done in a way that is almost like a theme park where it's, it's not, it didn't exist before. It's, it's referencing something else, you know, in the culture or something like that. And then you also have the, the capitalist culture, uh, culture, uh, attached to it where people are, you know, going and eating and buying things and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, actually, I wanted to keep it uh, very open to interpretation. So mm -hmm. I didn't specifically choose for uh, either this being 
commercial uh, and sort of facadism or this this being real original Dutch colonial buildings. I think mm-hmm. it could really be both. And it's like what Rudy said, uh, even traditionally, these buildings are very front focused and they'll have a lot of detail and decoration on the front and then on the sides. It's it's much different and much more simple. So uh, mm-hmm. even with what I've been building here recently, I think you can still go two ways. You know, these could either be um, they could even be moved buildings you know from a different location mm. uh, brought mm-hmm. over here and reconstructed i don't know there's it's always interesting to try and come up with a story to the developments of whatever you're building in planet zoo um so that's something to maybe work out later but for now i just thought yeah this would be uh, a really cool sort of main street like boulevard section and generally very much inspired by the Jakarta Old Town, but at the same time, none of the buildings specifically are based on buildings in the Jakarta Old Town. Um, That was really sort of an interesting way that I ended up approaching this, Um, because these buildings are generally really just inspired by actual buildings in the Netherlands, but then Mm -hmm. I'm trying to give them the spin that the colonial Dutch architecture seems to have. So, of course, the textures are very different. Instead of dark bricks, we're using white plaster Mm -hmm. uh, because that makes the buildings a lot more cool, of course. The the roof colors are uh, a bit different, that very orangey color that you tend to see a lot of uh, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And what's also a bit different is the way they interact with the streets. Most Dutch buildings in the Netherlands are really just a flat facade. Uh, But I found a lot of buildings in uh, colonial areas, not just in Indonesia, but also in Malaysia, for instance, where they have these overhanging eaves uh, or or some kind of um, arched hallway in front of the building, Mm -hmm. um, which I guess provides some shade and makes for a a better way of interacting with the street in in a much warmer climate. Um, So I did try to incorporate some of this into it as well. Nice. Which is also very, very good in terms of weather, because it's also very rainy over there at, at mm-hmm. times. And so if we mm. turn that into like a shopping facade, uh, you know, a promenade or whatever, it, it could actually act also as a little bit of a shelter for rain. <laughs> Once there is this very heavy rain pouring down, you can at least still go on and, and move from one building to the other. I know my crazy brain, though, is already yeah. thinking about what if we put a cover over the whole thing like they, they're doing in Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just about to say, have you seen, uh, are, was this the, the main street in Universal in Osaka in Japan? I uh-huh. think it is. Well, yeah, it's, also right. the, it's also the main street in uh, Disneyland Tokyo, I think, has the cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was added behind, uh, uh, it was, that was added after the fact, right? I think they built the, the main street first, like the original main street, and then just I don't put a giant roof that. over it. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, it's definitely very unique. What I find amazing is how you pull these textures together. That's like, oh, that's just that's just clearly Chinese. And then as you go further, it's like, oh, well, that's actually getting a little bit less Chinese. (laughs) That's really cool. (laughs) Right. And I guess I I was feeling that I was actually looking for some brackets to use for these decorations for a while there's not a lot that you can use here so this was honestly one of my best options for now uh, at the same time though i i wasn't really too afraid to use the chinese pieces because at the end of the day um there's actually a huge chinese mm-hmm. population in indonesia and you can definitely find nice. chinese influences there um so even that i think could work out all right in the end i love the swoop on that jeez yeah. Just one more addition to the to the uh, Asian pieces. Like um, I think they're mainly inspired by by Chinese, but in the game they're also called like <laughs> East Asia. Yeah, they definitely make them. pieces, and yeah. not specifically. <laughs> yeah, like you know, I mean, it is clearly Chinese, but it's it's still called East Asia, and I guess like they did a good job on making it not too spot on mm-hmm. Chinese. Why this might be also a reason why we can use them a bit more versatile. Um, but yeah, I, I, I still think that there could be even more, you know, <laughs> there's so much more to the East Asian style that could be in there. So I really hope that there is a chance of getting a bit more specific, for example, mm-hmm. Japanese uh, kind of sort of uh, theming. That would be awesome. Yeah, that's just amazing. The you know, Just the more you layer and the more that you use these Dutch tenets of architecture that you can take these these wild textures and put them together and it, and it mm-hmm. functions. Yeah, I think I, I ended up doing a, a bit of experimentation before I started working on this just to see which pieces, you know, could work for 
uh, mm -hmm. which part of the building. The most important thing that I ended up focusing on a lot was uh, the gables, because when it comes to Dutch architecture, um, it's it's all about the, mm -hmm. the, the facades up front. Um, and the, they have these typical gables that you find in many Dutch buildings. So for instance, if you go from right to left on the buildings here, uh, on the right you have what they call a clock gable, which is curved on the sides mm -hmm. and then rounded up top with just one texture for the whole thing. Uh, and then the middle one is what's often called a staircase, uh, which is where you have these little steps, very common nice. everywhere in the Netherlands. Uh, and for this one, I'm trying to go for something that's a bit like mm -hmm. a neck gable. Well, that's literally translated from Dutch. I don't know <laughs> if there's a proper English term for it. Um, <laughs> it didn't work out that well, um, but I think at the end of the day for, for a dormer jutting out on the front, uh, it is really that one element which tells you that, okay, this isn't just any European uh, architecture, but specifically Dutch, because this is really where um, I think Dutch architecture, even the colonial one, uh, nice. really separates itself from other European styles. Ooh, we're getting a canal too? I'm not sure. We're getting a canal Are too? Are we getting a what? All right. uh, yeah, actually, yeah. Um, I wasn't sure for a while if I wanted to, but at the end of the day, yeah, I figured I had to do it. I also couldn't really come up with a better way to make the boulevard in the middle of the park. Um, so yeah, here's the canal. So I'm going to try to work on that for a bit right now as well. Plus, it actually connects to the lake of the flamingos as well. So you can, we can build this whole sort of uh, water ecosystem where everything Perfect. is a bit interconnected yeah. because uh, the river connecting on the other side of the flamingos is, of course, also uh, has this little... Uh, <laughs> yes, where the rubbish is. And you are going to bet that there's going to be some trash uh, wherever there's people. So <laughs> just expect it now. <laughs> yep. Every episode, just a little bit more trash. Uh, I think you're going to have to add that later because I forgot to add some trash in this, <laughs> this canal, but there will undoubtedly be some. <laughs> Oh, I really love how mm -hmm. this is coming together. Like, I I do love the area where you build in. That really sets up uh, a new challenge now for Next for Lady to come up. I think she's, first of all, going to finish working on, on her uh, exhibit for the Gariel. But I think later on it will be very interesting to, to blend in this first area. Because we I think we came to a point where our areas are close enough to each other to, to think about the way mm -hmm. how they are connected, at least. So mm -hmm. I'm really gonna be very exciting to see how this works out. I think I, I think I have a vision yeah. now. So oh, <laughs> and I have, to, I have to wait a little bit. <laughs> okay, that's very good because I did leave good. some areas open for you to like pick <laughs> apart. Uh, I just realized, Rudy, that we didn't even say why Lady's not here. Oops. I rem yeah, I, I was just about wait a second. There is no Lady, right? <laughs> I think. I think she's gonna get so mad much. at us. Uh, maybe you can maybe you can add uh, some audio in so. at the beginning. That's <laughs> just just pauses the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, I'll just we'll we'll just add a a little. I'll just take a clip of one of Lady's videos where you just where she just goes, "Hi guys," <laughs> and I'll just I'll just edit into this video. <laughs> Oh God! Well, sorry, lady. Um, we are sorry. Then, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, uh, f for all of the audience out there, uh, lady currently has a flu, so I hope she gets better soon. I swear, there's really a plague sucks. happening yeah, in Europe right now. Unfortunately, so. she can't be there with God. us today. <laughs> <laughs> you must feel weird, like first me. You guys are all, all sick, the time and you're and all in different areas well. too. Man, we just don't have that junk food. What you <laughs> is guys that what's the that keeping us alive? Us? <laughs> Box flamingos. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> That's kind of counterintuitive, but uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe it is. Uh, yeah, I got some protesters too because the box flamingos. Oh wow, this is a lot closer to the flamingo habitat than I thought. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I, I I was looking at that like, hmm, there's not a lot of space for this boulevard to happen. So maybe a little bit of foliage from the flamingo habitat is going to have to be moved. Maybe even opened so you can have yeah, another area another to view from there. over here. Just some random ideas. Oh, so that the staff uh, members are yeah. even more like on spot. That's great. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. So that's awesome for them. Well, now my cover has to yeah. be cantilevered somehow. Well, it okay, it has to support the weight on the other side of the building 
Oh, that's gonna be the Dutch bridge over here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. this is uh, the typical Dutch bridge that you see in a lot of places. Um, this one in particular was mostly modeled after the Magere Heijn bridge in Amsterdam, which is one of the iconic bridges in Amsterdam. Um, but not entirely, it's, it's a bit of a mix of things. And there's even one of these bridges in oh, Jakarta, cool. which is really cool. Uh, oh, however, awesome. the Jakarta one is brown. And I, I, I do think yeah. white looks better. So, yeah, white it definitely it is. blends in better with the area. I think it's the first real usage of chain link. <laughs> it's actually chain yeah. in the game. <laughs> actually, work. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Oh god. Yeah, it this might is be. really cool. Yeah, it's actually really fun to build this thing. Uh, I remember a long time ago. I actually tried building a, a, a Dutch city in <laughs> Rollercoaster Coaster Tycoon 3, and a friend of mine built one of these bridges in SketchUp, imported it into the game, and since then I've always wanted to make one of these. And what? It's now <laughs> six years later or something like that, and I'm finally building one of these bridges. So Brian, if you're seeing this, uh, the thanks for for all the help you've given me these years. This you've inspired me to finally <laughs> tackle my own bridge. It's really fun, actually. I mean, that's like quite some time. <laughs> wow. This is cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I like, I really like the design of that mm -hmm. bridge now. I, it's like you're adding so much detail, but it makes it look really, really great because it, it, it adds mm -hmm. so much weight to I it. Love the little rounded corners yeah. there. Oh, it's just, it's just a nice touch too. Also, how you yeah. you did the path mm -hmm. thing—that's so clever. Uh, it might be one of the first <laughs> usages of yes. this ugly little edge <laughs> that actually <laughs> works. Uh, it's funny because actually I wasn't always sure if I was gonna do it like this, um, if if I was gonna build mm -hmm. the bridge like this. Um, but then, when I tried connecting the paths, it automatically made this ugly uh, this ugly little bit in the middle. And then I thought to myself, wait, if you're going to do that anyway, I might as well try <laughs> and see if I can manage to so build one of these bridges. So finally the game with its awkward path mechanism is uh, featuring some creativity and drive. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yep. Oh, I mean, gosh. at the end of the day, creativity does come from limitations as well. So. True. Oh, true Dutchman here. He's making it. Yeah. <laughs> He's controlling the water. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I couldn't control myself. Um, I actually realized also that we have a bit of a, a water level difference here, uh, some different heights, and I wasn't sure what to do with that big glass fence, but I ended oh, up covering yeah. the whole thing. Um, maybe, Mike, you want to go back at some point and, and change some things. That's totally fine by me. That's at the end of the day. I, I think your job <laughs> is to take our stuff and just improve and add to it. And that's it looks good really to awesome. me. Um, but I added a, a small <laughs> pumping station. Yeah, here. that's really nice. All right. Yeah, this pumping station is actually also just modeled after the one that's often used in the Netherlands to, well, basically keep the country dry. <laughs> keep it from, so. Yeah, keep it from being reclaimed. <laughs> for, by now, the sea. for now. <laughs> for now. For <laughs> now. Until the sea level rises even more. Oh god. Um, so yeah, that's that's it for the time lapse. But I would like to show off the park uh, yeah. a little bit in real time as well, if that's okay by you guys. Yeah, go ahead. I am. Okay, so we're back and we're going to see uh, if a little theory by Mike here <laughs> works out. Um, <laughs> to have the so spire Actually, continue. Mike is now already changing <laughs> oh, the layout while we are just in the genius. episode. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, that's genius. Because the... Uh, yeah, the spire is such a, a, a vertical element in what is otherwise a very horizontal mm -hmm. setting. Just everything about it, the rock work, the path here, the, the roof structure of the building, except for this big spire. Even the way the oh, trees really cool. kind of uh, valley in to, to that building. Yeah. It's yeah. very cool. Yep. I love that it follows almost the, uh, the, the tilted or rounded mm -hmm. shape of the roof. So the, you know the the the, the foliage gets mm -hmm. higher up to the sides, following the the roundish line. I like that. It gives you this this valley where the where the building is in. My job it. was e honestly cool. quite easy because just the way that all of the foliage around here frames this spot is just absolute. So mm -hmm. so from this part you can see it in the distance as well, and same goes for the little path over the bridge here. You've got it peeking through the bamboo trees there. 
I just love that you come up with sidelines finally. I would be mad at you if in, in your videos the word sideline <laughs> yeah. would have come up. Seriously, you have to do so it. Cute. I love That's it. Really really. Cool. I love that that sightline. I'm not gonna say the other term. Although it is a grill, so <laughs> I guess you could turn, use the term weenies. It is it is definitely a little bit of a weenie as well. <laughs> Literally. We maybe shouldn't use the terminology in zoos. Although yeah, it can definitely work for zoos too. I mean, the concept is also, like, really old already. Like, all these ancient uh, towns and stuff had this naturally mm -hmm. to, to make, you know, to have uh, easy for traders mm -hmm. to know where to go. So, that's uh, basically a uh, very, very old concept. So, yeah, but I think it's it's really cool. But wouldn't colonial people right. do that anyways? Because, I mean, they're, like, you know, kind of uh, sculpting over the, the, the status into the area. They just kind of... Uh, went to and, and made this their own, you know. I, I, yeah, I mean, I tried to, you know, let that sound <laughs> more polite than it actually was. And yeah. come in <laughs> and, yeah, impose their culture <laughs> on everybody. <laughs> yeah, just just flex on the locals. Uh, but, well, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just, you know, we do it for, 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 for science. science. For science. <laughs> well, this is a beautiful <laughs> shot that you've got here. Yeah, oh. yeah it is. I mean, it's interesting, yeah. It's interesting because in real life, it's also, you know, obviously colonialism has, has left a bad taste in many people's mouths. But at the same time, uh, I think there are a few things where it sort of led to cultural mm -hmm. enrichment. And architecture is definitely something where, hate it or love it, uh, it, it created sort of new styles and things that are still appreciated. Um, so the old town of Jakarta has a lot of heritage buildings, these, these old Dutch colonial buildings. And uh, just a week ago, I think, I discovered that the, uh, the central canal running through the area was renovated. And it looks very, nice. very nice and shiny and uh, well maintained. So um, it's actually, uh, it seems to be quite respected and it's becoming more of a, a tourist hotspot now too. Um, so it is interesting. So maybe don't put litter in the canal is what you're saying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> <laughs> it's not us; it's the guests. So it's it's just. I guess you have to sort of see everything in a bit of a in a bit of a nuanced thing, and sometimes, I don't know. It, it's colonialism is such a difficult history to look back, and I know um, it seemed very disingenuous when I was mm -hmm. uh, sort of touching upon this in the first episode. Um, but I, I think I think you just have to sometimes take a step back and admit that you you know, uh, appreciate the, the sort of art or architecture of it while recognizing that the real life uh, situation was terrible and that these colonial buildings were built by a government which, which oppressed locals, etc. Um, but mm -hmm. why am I getting so political in a Planet <laughs> Zoo video? I don't know. I, I mean, in, glad, in you know. terms of history, it's never really rose-colored <laughs> as much as we like to admit. Um, yeah. And yeah, this is just a snapshot of a time, a period in time in which there was change in, in the country. Right. Yep. And, you know, we're just fortunate that that is a game yep. at the end of the day. And, and that's the thing. That's the thing which, like, from this Pandora's box of colonialism, <laughs> I'm just drawing <laughs> this, like, really cool mix of different cultures when it comes to architecture. <laughs> I'll leave everything else in the box um, <laughs> for now, at least. Oh, that's so fitting to, to Planet well, Zoo. Leave it all in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to unbox that Pandora's box, no matter how many <laughs> notifications I get. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I always, as a child, I always was like fascinated by colonial buildings in like a tropical or a different a wild yeah. setting. Um, I think there's a sort of romanticism about it, but then you also, as you grow up, you start to learn. Oh, yeah, it's not as it's not as uh, not as nice. But here, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's just a it's a thematic choice. Yeah, guys. We're, we didn't. There's no nobody lived here. <laughs> this is this is a thematic exactly. choice. And, whoa, I just <laughs> built a blueprint. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Did whoa. that even happen? All right. Oh, God. So it's, been, it's like, okay, guys, so that's what I'm actually building. Yeah. <laughs> Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So I think, I think we've gone off topic enough. Um, it's time to 
give this park to somebody else. <laughs> Uh, who's going to do the next episode, actually? Is it you, Rudy, or the lady? Uh, the lady yeah. was. I don't know how long she's going to be down for the count, mm. though. That's a good point. Yeah, well, if at all, I'll jump in. But um, I guess she she will be fine, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, we... <laughs> <laughs> just assuming. You know. Yeah, she'll be fine. Yeah, don't worry about her. She'll be fine. <laughs> oh, God. If she's, she's hunched if over. She's listening. Hunched over her computer. Like, I got to finish quality. <laughs> 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 but she's already finished enough when she's watching the video again. So first we are forgetting about her she's halfway through. She's gonna be so mad. <laughs> then we're like, oh, she, she will be fine. She'll be doing that. She's not gonna be happy about what just happened here. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll link the uh, the playlist in, in the top comment on the video in any case. All right, pinch and turd. Of course, you guys' channels in the description. So whatever the next episode is gonna be, yeah, you guys as viewers are gonna have to be able to find it somehow. Uh <laughs> 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 Yeah. I, yeah, I you're on your, on your own, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you here. My my job is done. You do whatever. <laughs> no, I'll I'll try my best to keep y'all up Um It's just um, oh. <laughs> Yeah, the the, the collaboration is right. great, but they quickly start, you know, falling apart in as, as in terms of how organization goes i suppose well, as long as we have lady <laughs> well, we didn't expect a plague to roll through and some food poisoning <laughs> okay no i i'm sorry i didn't plan out that word <laughs> I, I, maybe don't go back to that restaurant no, I, no but i'm also like i wrote a letter already to the hospital that i didn't have a pc there like i thought it was mandatory <laughs> to have a streaming pc and and all <laughs> I am Rudy Rancamel. Perhaps you've heard of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. I, I just gave them my card and they were like, what the hell? <laughs> I don't even have cards, guys, but well, <laughs> if I would. <laughs> you need to have cards now so that you can just drop them off as like tips at restaurants. Like, here you go. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. <laughs> this episode is getting more and more off topic. Um, all right, we've gone off the rails twice now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 really need to. Uh, th- thanks, you guys, for watching. Uh, thank you, Mike and Rudy, for for being here with yeah. me. Uh-huh. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been great, honestly. <laughs> and yeah, I hope to. It's been fun. Yeah, it's been a little bit of an off-topic video, but it's fun. Have we ever been on? Topic? Sometimes we, we stay a little bit more on topic, but uh, I don't think so. sometimes things just go south. <laughs> <laughs> Random podcast about colonialism and food poisoning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are a bunch of young white males. We realistically need to start a podcast at some point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like I feel like the train's <laughs> getting a little loose yeah. on the rails again. <laughs> uh. But there was also another direction yeah. we could have taken. <laughs> we d- we did the, the conversation didn't go <laughs> off the rail. It just landed on a whole different rail and went from there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right, outro of this because I really have to start making some food. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> bye. Okay, bye. All right. Yeah, uh, that's all we still had to say, right? Yeah, I already thank the viewers for watching. I thank you guys for being here. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>